Hello and welcome to The Arbitration Conversation. So in this episode, we have a real treat. Um, we've got Catherine, Dr. Catherine Titi, and she's actually um, a tenured research associate professor at the French Center for Scientific Research, CERSA, at the University of Paris. And she also serves on the steering committee of Academic Forum of ISDS, whose work contributes to discussions in Working Group 3 of UNCITRAL. And she's been heavily involved in UNCITRAL Working Group 3, which we're going to have an opportunity to talk with her about in the area of arbitration specifically. Um, also, she is with the International Law Association Committee on the Rule of Law. She's also on the editorial board of the Yearbook on International Investment Law and Policy. She's also a fellow of the Chartered Institute of Arbitrators. Very, very impressive resume. Lots more to add that I could go on. I'm just very thankful. Thank you for being here, Catherine. Thank you very much for having me, Amy. Well, this will be a really good discussion because it's a topic we have not yet covered. Um, which is investment treaty arbitration. So as we start out, Catherine, if you wouldn't mind just giving a little bit about what exactly is investment treaty arbitration? Sure. Uh, so investment treaty arbitration is arbitration that concerns investment uh, disputes and the arbitration clause is found in an investment treaty. We could have contractual investment arbitration, such as when an investor uh, goes abroad and has a concession contract and there's an arbitration clause, uh, but also states sign treaties between them and um, they include access uh, to arbitration uh, for foreign investors. So investment treaty arbitration always involves a, a foreign investor as the claimant and the host state as uh, the respondent. So what exactly then in this area with UNCTRAL, why is the United Nations, um, how did they get involved in, and what is your role with this, with the new reforms that are happening in UNCTRAL? My role is of course um, not a formal one, it's a very small role. I'm there, I'm attending as a delegate of the European uh, Society of International Law. Uh, and um, I'm lucky enough to be in the steering committee of the Academic Forum on ISDS, which is uh, um, linked directly to the work of Ancestral Working Group 3, in the sense that when Ancestral uh, wants, Ancestral and the states uh, are interested in work in a particular area, or on a particular topic, uh, they ask us to, we have uh, working groups, and they ask us to produce a report uh, which then feeds into the negotiations, but in an informal uh, manner. They, I mean, the ancestral process is a process driven by states. The states are the ones that, of course, uh, take the decisions and negotiate. Well, I have to say it's, a, it's an area near and dear to my heart in that I was heavily involved with UNCTRAL Working Group 3 when they were dealing with online dispute resolution. So what exactly is the question they're asking or what, what is the focus of the working group three now with respect to arbitration? Uh, so we all know about the backlash, uh, so-called backlash against uh, investment arbitration. So um, a few years ago, uh, some states started being skeptical about investment arbitration. Um, civil society started getting involved. And so there was at some stage the realization that uh, it would be good to reform the system uh, so as to make it more sustainable, improve the system so that the criticisms that had been addressed against it uh, could be dealt with. Um, at the same time, um, the ancestral process uh, is also linked to um, the fact that the European Union was pushing uh, to, uh, to, to have its own project uh, discussed at the multilateral uh, level. Um, but the fact is that in, in 2017, uh, Ancetral started these negotiations uh, that uh, involve uh, many states uh, from around the world. Uh, they normally take place uh, twice a year. Uh, and um, um, the idea is again that um, the system, the investor state dispute settlement system uh, is going to be uh, improved. And now with, within Ancetral Working Group 3, um, there are um, four different strains of um, potential reform, uh, let's say. So arbitration is one of them. Uh, so um, the current system 
investment treaty arbitration improved. How to improve investment treaty arbitration. Uh, we have three other strains and these are the creation of a multilateral court, the creation of a standing appellate mechanism, and there's a fourth strain which is not to include any investor state dispute settlement at all, but I think this fourth one is being sidelined uh, because um, um, not formally, but uh, I mean, the discussions are about reform. So when you don't want something, uh, yeah, it's, it's not yeah. a question of reforming it. But this is interesting. So I want to kind of ask a little bit further into this controversy more or less about arbitration, because yeah, I've heard the same sort of buzz and I understand the reason for the working group coming together to sort of reform arbitration. What are some of though the main ideas that are currently being discussed for reform specifically for arbitration? Um, so um, the, the working group has had three phases. Phase one was about discussing um, if um, there are, which are the other are some topics uh, that need to be uh, improved. Uh, so phase two, uh, so phase one was about identifying problems with the current system. Phase two was about uh, saying, do we desire reform? And the answer was yes. And then we passed uh, on to phase three, which is very recent. Um, if I remember correctly, phase three started in uh, October uh, of last year. And we had the session in October and then a session in January. And then we had the, the health crisis and everything uh, stopped uh, formally. Uh, and um, uh, the topics that started being discussed were about uh, the creation of a, an advisory center on investment uh, law or investment dispute settlement. This would be broad, it would cover all the strains of reform, but it could have an impact on arbitration, such as by offering advice to developing states uh, when they face an investor state dispute. Um, then um, a code of conduct um, was discussed. Um, third party funding was another issue. The creation of a multilateral court was discussed, but this is not related to, to arbitration. Um, I mean, there, there were a couple, there were, there were a few topics I can actually, um, I, can, I can easily check because I, I have them here. Um, I think these are the topics. I don't see any um, any other topic that that has the mean and the appellate mechanism. But with respect to arbitration, the, the topics were, I mean, the the, the, the code of conduct, um, the, the third party funding. There aren't any definite answers that are, are coming up. So th there isn't any drafting of any provision. So there isn't a concrete result as yet, but the states are becoming aware of the issues. They agree there is consensus that something needs to be done about these issues and different options are discussed, even if there is no final um, decision. And just a, a, a small addition, um, since the health crisis, uh, Ancetrata is holding uh, webinars with the states and so there are some some issues that have been discussed, and these more recent issues are, for instance, um, um, mediation and alternative dispute settlement, um, interpretation of treaties by treaty parties, and a few other issues, uh, reflective loss and indirect shareholder claims. These are not formal negotiations, but they serve to progress on on the work, and uh, and so that when the sessions resume. Um, we, I mean, the states will have progressed and won't be where they were in January. You know, this is important. I mean, even just the discussions themselves, I remember with working group three with online dispute resolution, we didn't actually, I mean, we, we met from 2012 until 2016, um, and there was no concrete system set in place, but nonetheless, there were discussions that I think really helped people think through some of the issues um, that are still on the table. So I think it's really exciting that you're part of that process and your role. I'm wondering also sort of how does that relate? For example, I'm thinking about Latin America and there was some discussion um, a couple years back where they were sort of pulling out of these investment treaty arbitrations. Maybe if you could speak to that and maybe how the Latin American um, countries are coming into this reform. 
Latin America is, but Latin American states are participating in the reform negotiations. So they're actively participating, including uh, some states that are traditionally seen, not just traditionally, are seen as, as being, uh, let's say, hesitant about uh, in international dispute settlement and preferring regional solutions as opposed to international solutions. Um, and uh, in one state, um, um, in, in particular, that has a, a particular uh, situation is Ecuador, uh, and Ecuador is is really vocal in uh, in, in the negotiations. Um, Ecuador uh, terminated its investment. Well, it's a long story. Ecuador in 2008 amended its constitution. This led to uh, the constitutional court finding that uh, the investment treaties of Ecuador that included arbitration clauses were unconstitutional. And this made Ecuador terminate its investment treaties. Some of them are still in the process. They have not been terminated, but they will. There was a change of government and the new government decided that it wants to sign investment treaties and give access to investment arbitration. And so currently there's a pending decision uh, before the Constitutional Court where the government has asked it if it's possible to reinterpret the provision. We don't know what's going to happen, but this shows that uh, nothing is static and even uh, I, I want to be positive and believe that even states that uh, have been skeptical in the past about dispute settlement can be brought back into the system and uh, and appreciate the, the value of um, being able to solve the disputes uh, at the international level by an impartial um, and by impartial adjudicators. Uh, so oh, uh, America is participating. Yeah, well, that's good to hear. I mean, especially it shows progress, which is absolutely absolutely necessary in these kinds of, because it's tough work, I understand. I mean, there's a lot of sort of back discussions and negotiations that go on in these unsee trial working groups, and, and sometimes it can be challenging. So that's really good to hear about progress in these different areas. It kind of makes me sort of leads to my next question, and I'd love to get your thoughts on sort of what you see, especially because you're right in the throes of it with um, unsee trial and what you've been doing. What do you see as the biggest challenges in the next five years, especially with respect to investment treaty arbitration? Thank you. Um, I mean, the, 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 the issues start with the backlash, the famous backlash. So in the, uh, the, the decision was taken that something needed to be done about it, and that was to reform. Uh, and I think this was the correct decision because adaptation is essential in order to, um, to to not have treaties that are being terminated and so no longer access is given to dispute settlement um, and um, I mean this is only part of the um, this is uh, this is part of the issue because of course we have uh, some new treaties that uh, even uh, so the, the USMCA, for instance, doesn't give access to, uh, to um, arbitration for disputes between Canadian investors in the US and um, American investors in Canada. Um, but, uh, uh, but it does give access to arbitration uh, for Mexico, for instance. So, uh, so there is still arbitration there. So there is, uh, there is still hope, let's say. Uh, and, uh, uh, but I, mean, I think that um, ad adaptation is, is essential. Um, there is one, I mean, one of the challenges is systemic competition. And um, when I say systemic competition, I'm thinking of um, the, the the European Union's project, uh, the creation of a multilateral court. Um, of course, not everyone is going to subscribe to the court, and we may end up with uh, two different types of dispute settlement. Uh, some going with arbitration, some going with with the court. Uh, so uh, I, I think that there's there's something to be done about making arbitration more attractive in this sense, uh, with a view to competing, uh, in quotation marks, uh, with a multilateral course, uh, court in terms of, I don't know, costs, in terms of uh, um, efficiency, time, uh, uh, all the, the issues that have been uh, identified. Um, and um, 
I mean, again, we have um, arbitration centers uh, that are actually reforming uh, the arbitration rules. So this is not a reform is not only taking place at the multilateral level within UNCITRO, uh, but also uh, outside. Uh, and uh, we had, for instance, the, um, the, the ICC's new arbitration rules uh, are more tra include more transparency and transparency is important for investment treaty arbitration as opposed to commercial arbitration probably. Um, but so there, I mean, ICSID is, is amending its arbitration rules. Um, uh, so uh, there are, I mean, the steps are being taken or at least steps are being taken uh, in order to make the system uh, more, more sustainable. And I would just like to close with a, a final remark that we should uh, also remember that um, substantive standards are being interpreted uh, in arbitration. So um, the, the, the backlash affected arbitration, uh, but uh, arbitration is just a means of resolving disputes. The, the underlying rules that are being interpreted are the substantive rules. Uh, so maybe there's also something to be done about um, focusing on the substantive rules as well. Oh, that's such a great point. Well, this is a lot for us to think about. I really appreciate just the, getting the background, understanding what's happening in UNCTRAL, and your ideas and thoughts about the hurdles we face with investment treaty arbitration. Catherine, it's been a complete pleasure. Thank you so much for taking this time with us today. Thank you so much, Amy, and likewise, it's been a great pleasure. <laughs> Have a good day. You too.